Okay, so first half of the test tomorrow, all of these problems are online for you. Extra practice, and then I'll post your solutions as well as the other class periods today. Um, Friday is the second half of the review, but I will not be here. On, well, I'll be in the building Friday, but I have a meeting all day long. So um, I am also going to post, uh, when I post this video and all of these solutions, I'm also going to put online tonight last year's second half. Stuff. So the video of me going through the second half of the test review will be posted online, as well as last year's um, those classes study guides. So what you would normally get, I'm just going to post that early. Um, and then Friday in class, you can either watch that video at your seat. Um, I'm also going to have some extra practice problems around the room, like some little groups that you can kind of rotate around and practice problems that you want extra practice on, that sort of thing. So you will be reviewing in class. It just won't be. Um, if you want to write a calculator today, you can grab one because this stuff that we're reviewing is um, the basic calculator stuff. Maybe you can practice using that calculator today if you like. Okay, first three problems. Number one, ABC. Uh, ABC, or just evaluating. Pick a number. 33 of her. Log of 10,000. You should just be able to take that in the calculator. It's not 100. We can do another one also. Whoa. Whoa. It is 10 to the 4, so the answer is 4. Okay, 39. Okay, so 39 is log base 16 of 2. Um, how do you type something like that in a basic calculator that doesn't have the log base function? It's a change of base property. Log of 2 over log of 16. Um, this isn't written with common log. You could also use uh, natural logs if you wanted to do that. So go ahead and type that in real quick. Um, I want to say the answer is 1 fourth or 0.25. That one's kind of a pretty one. Works out of. So just double check you can get that okay. Um, number one thing you need to know about logs is how to write it with exponents. Number two thing you need to know about log is how to use the change of base property. Okay, because those are the two things that are going to help you the most when you don't have a graphing calculator. Moving on. Uh, let's pick one of each of these. So pick one from the left side. So 57 through 64. 61. 61. So I have log base square root 5 of square root 7. How do I evaluate that? What are you going to do? Close. Flip it. So the base is always on the bottom, is how I remember it. The base is always on the bottom. All right, type it in. This one's not going to be pretty. I have no idea what the answer is. Um, if I get it three decimal places, 1.760. Okay. Um, pick a number from the right side, 41 through 52. 50. So I have 3 log base 3 of 5 minus log base 2 of 2 to the negative third. So what happens when you have a log and an exponent of the same base? They just cancel. So that 3 and log base 3 are going to cancel, and they'll leave me with 5. And when they cancel, 5 is no longer an exponent. Okay? Minus, same thing's going to happen in the second term. You have a log base 2 and an exponent of base 2. They're inverses, they cancel, and I'm left with the power negative 3. And then 5 minus negative 3 is... Eight. Any questions? Quick little evaluating problems. Uh -huh. um, this will be part one, A, B, and C, kind of like it was on your take home quiz. Other questions? All right, moving on. Uh, the graphing problem. Pick a number. 76. 
All right, I'm going to write this over here. Y equals 4 minus log space 2 of P minus 1. Okay, so a few different ways you could do this problem. Um, I'm going to do it how we practiced in class. So when we did this in class, there were three steps. First step was get the log alone. Second step was write with exponents. And then third step was isolate the x. So you could then put numbers in an xy table. So let's start with how do I get the log base 2 alone. Track 4, so y minus 4 equals negative log base 2 to 3 minus x. Then what? Divide through the negative and flip my sign. So negative y plus 4 equals log base 2, 3 minus x. Once the log is isolated, write it with exponents. What would this look like with exponents? 2 to the negative y plus 4 equals 3 minus x. And now get the x alone. So what do I do? Subtract 3 minus 3 equals negative x. And then you can multiply or divide through a negative 1. Um, you could just write the whole thing over negative 1 if you want, or you could put the negative 1 in front. I'm just going to do that. Um, I had a few people on the quiz that looked like they were trying to contribute through and they ended up making a mistake. So it's not really necessary that you do that as long as you have the um, x isolated, you're good. Okay, so what we've set up is a situation where we can plug in y's, which we always started with negative 2 to 2. Um, and get out the x's. And then you can put these just in your basic calculator would work here. So if I put in negative 2, so it would give me a positive 2 plus 4, so it would be 2 to the 6, which is 64, minus 3, which is 61, make it negative. Negative 61. Again, you can use a calculator, don't put this in your head. If I put negative 1 in, it would be 2 to the 5th, so 32. Minus 3 is 29, make it negative. Negative 29. If I put in 0, it would be 2 to the 4th, so 16 minus 3 is 13, make it negative. Plug in 1, I'm going to have, that will be 2 to the 3rd, 8. Minus 3 is 5, make it negative. Plug in 2, so I'll have 2 squared, which is 4, minus 3 is 1, make it negative. I'm going to plug in a couple more here. Let's plug in 3, um, that would give me 2 to the 1st. Minus one, uh, minus three is negative one. Make it negative. I get a positive one. Maybe one more. Let's plug in four. So maybe two to the zero, which is one. Minus three is negative one. Right? Wait. What is it? Two to zero is two. Minus three, negative one. Make it no wait. That doesn't make sense. Two to zero is one. Oh, it's negative two. Sorry. Hmm, I do it. Okay. Didn't too much in my head. So I have 1 minus 3, which is negative 2, make it negative, positive 2. There we go. Yeah? Good. Okay. All right. Can you tell where the asymptote is going to be? You can use either the equation or the table to figure this out. You want to plug in some more numbers? Not sure. Plug in 5. If I plug in 5, I'm going to have 2 to the negative first, which is a half. Minus 3 is negative 2 and a half. Change the sign. Positive 2 and a half. Plug in 6. So we're going to be 2 to the negative second. Or 4. Minus 3. Okay. Uh, what did I say? 4 minus 3 is a negative 2.75. Positive 2.75. You see we're approaching something now? To make it a little more obvious. Yeah, and do you see that inside the log when we talked about what's inside the log looks like your domain and where your domain stops at is your um, asymptote. So three is probably a good guess if you look at that equation. All right, so plot your points. You can plot whatever one here you want. Just make sure you have an asymptote at three and we want to make sure we don't cross that. So everything's either going to be on the left or the right of that. Um, so let's see. I've got y is one when x is negative five. So plot the ones that will fit here. Um, negative 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 4, 2 and a half, 5. You can see it's going to look something like that. 
Okay, so obviously it's been reflected and flipped and everything else. Um, what is the domain then? To name those properties. Negative infinity to three. What is the range? All real, that's easy points. Even if you completely blank on this graph, all real numbers will be to range. And vertical asymptote is at x equals three, which again, you can get from inside that parentheses in the original law function. Um, this is definitely probably like worst case scenario type of problem because there's a lot going on in here. If you look at some of the other problems at the top, they're not quite as complicated as far as the numbers you're plugging in and stuff. So won't get any worse than this. That's good. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Like you're plugging in here? Yeah. You mean, so like, let's say I plug in negative two. Here's how I would type it in negative one parentheses two with the exponent, and then I would put my exponent in parentheses. So it would be, I wouldn't even type in that negative. I would do minus negative two, which would be a two plus four. And then minus three, like that. Because this calculator doesn't do a power. Um, that looks like a power, you need to put it in parentheses. So that could maybe fix it. Or you could just figure out what that power is before you actually put it in. Okay. Other questions? All right, cool. Okay, the rest of the problems on this half of the test are just solving problems. And it says round to the nearest thousand, so, so three decimal places if you need to. Um, so some of them are going to be log equations. Remember, log equations could have extraneous answers. You want to take your numbers, plug them back in, make sure you have a positive number inside the log always. Um, and then exponential equations, you don't have to worry about that happening. It's going to be the other half of it. All right, so pick a number 15 through 22 to start with. 20. Okay. So I have log base 2 of x value x plus 1 equals 3. So we have a log equation. First step is get the log alone, which that's already done for us here. Second step is write this with exponents. What does this look like with exponents? And 2 to the third is 8. Absolute value equation, we will have two answers. So can you figure out, you probably don't need to like formally solve this. Can you figure out what the two missing numbers need to be? What positive number could I put in for X? Seven would work. What negative number could I put in for X? Yeah, negative nine. If you add one to that, you get negative eight. And then when it goes to the absolute value, it would become positive. So there's just the X will look up at the end. Now both of those, seven and negative nine, even though this is a negative number, it's still not an extraneous solution. You want to think about it. If I put it back in the original equation, would what's inside the log be positive? And the answer here is always yes, because it's an absolute value. You're always going to have a positive answer or zero, I guess. Okay. Questions? Yes. Uh, if we were to get a problem with uh, a fraction, would we need to get up to the next time? Um, a fraction where? In front? Yeah, if that happened, you could do two things. You can either move it to the power, or you could just divide by it to start. I'd probably just divide by it so I can get rid of it. So you could do either. Mm -hmm. So negative nine is a solution. It is a solution. Because the absolute value, what's inside the log, would still be positive. Yes. Okay, let's try another one. Good problem. 29. Okay, so we have three times four to two x minus one power plus four equals fourteen. Okay, first step. I think we're gonna do. Okay, so same idea. We want to isolate the exponential piece here. So subtract four. So that's gonna give me ten. Then what? Divide by three. So I'm just gonna leave it at ten thirds. Once you've isolated the exponent, now is where we're going to use logs. So we're going to take the log of both sides. And what does that let me do? Yeah, no, I could do that all at once if I want to. I take that 2x minus 1 and bring it down in front. It's one of our log properties, the power property. So what would you do now to solve? 
divide by log of 4, and this is the part you're going to put in the calculator now. So 2x minus 1 equals whatever log of 10 thirds divided by log of 4 is. I get point three decimal places 868. So then last steps, just add 1 and divide by 2. So 1.868, which will be... Point nine three four. Okay. Um, exponential equations you do not have to worry about carrying your solutions. Their domain is all real numbers, so whatever you get is fine. So you can always check it. Yes. So at this point, you could say log base four of ten thirds equals two x minus one, and then you would evaluate what's on the left with the change of base property. So you would say log of ten thirds divided by log of 4, of 4, not a base, equals 2x minus 1. And you can see that's actually the exact same thing we did. Log of 10 thirds divided by log of 4 again equals 2x minus 1. So you get the same thing either way. Okay? All right. Uh, let's try this one. Pick a number. 57. Log base 4 of x squared minus 7x plus 14 equals 1. What do I do? Write it as exponent. 4 to the first, x squared minus 7x plus 14, and 4 to the first, of course, is 4. Um, I still have people that are trying to solve problems like this by getting the x squared and the x alone. Unless you want to complete the square, do not do that. If it's a quadratic, you have to get it equal to 0 as your next step. So 0 equals x squared minus 7x plus 10. Does it factor? Uh, what does it factor to? And if you can't figure out how it factors, you can always use quadratic formula. The answers are 5 and 2. Now we want to check those and make sure that when I plug in 5 and I plug in 2, I at least have a positive number inside of the log. Um, so you can do that kind of quickly. If I plug in 5, I have 25 minus 35, so it's negative 10 plus 14. So it's positive. That's good. If I plug in 2, it has 4 minus 14 plus 14. So again, it's positive. That's good. Okay. So as long as you plug them in, you have a positive number inside that log, you don't have any extraneous solution. Questions? All right, next up. Number six, big problem. Which one? Twelve? Okay. So I have nine absolute value x equals 243. Um, this problem you can solve with logs. You do not have to, though, because these are some special bases. Nine and 243 can be written as powers of what number? Three. So instead of nine, I could write three to what power? Squared. And that's multiplied by that absolute value x. Instead of 243, I can write three to the fifth. And once you have the same base on both sides, you can just then compare the exponents. So I know two absolute value x plus equal five. Divide by two, so five halves. And what are my two answers then? Plus and minus five halves. And again, this is an exponential equation, so I don't have to worry about extraneous solutions, but you could always check your answer, plug it back in, make sure it works. Questions on mm -hmm. um, you would do what we did earlier, take the log of both sides, bring the exponent down, and then you divide by log sign. Which would be the three steps. Okay. All right, let's try this one. Take a number. One. Oops. All right, so I have two to the x squared power equals eight to the two x times one over 256. Okay, again, it looks kind of nasty, but look at your bases. Two, eight, and 256. Those are all powers of what number? Two. So leave this guy alone, 2 to the x squared, 8 is 2 to what power? <coughs> Third, and again, that's going to be multiplied 
All right, that's 2x. 256 is 2 to what power? Uh, well, so let me say 2 to the 8 down there, and then we'll do the negative. Okay, okay. so um, in order to drop the 2s and compare the exponents, we need to do a little bit more to combine the two pieces on the right together. We want a single base of 2. So the next thing I would do is I would take that 2 to the 8 and move it into the numerator, which you have to make that exponent negative to move it up. So I make it 2 to the x squared equals, and I said to multiply 3 times 2x is 6x. Um, times 2 to the negative 8 is equivalent. So it moves it to the numerator and becomes negative. And now how do I put those 2's together on the right? If they're multiplied with the same base, what do I do with the exponent? Add them. So it's going to be 2 to the x squared power equals 2 to the 6x plus negative 8. Um, if they were divided with the same base, what would you do with the exponents? You would subtract them, and I think that's what you had to do on your take-home quiz. There was one where they were divided, and you had to subtract the exponents to put them together. So at this point, now you have 2 to the power equals 2 to the power. You can drop the bases and say x squared must equal 6x minus 8. Quadratic is going to be equal to 0. This does factor. If not, you can use a quadratic formula. What is it? Factor 2 minus what? 4 and minus 2. So the solution plus 4 and 2. Again, no extraneous solutions because it's exponential, but you could always plug it back in and make sure that they work. Any questions on any of the steps there? No? Okay. We got two more. All right, pick one of these. Can I do? One third log of x plus one times one equals zero. Uh, how do I solve for? Move the one over, try to get the one along. Okay, then what? Multiply by three. Get rid of that fraction. What log base is this, by the way, if there's no number there? This is log base 10. So I've isolated the log. What does it look like with exponent? 10 to the third equals x plus 1. What is 10 to the third power? 1,000 equals x plus 1. So x equals 999 which if you put that back in, you can see there'll be a positive number inside the log, so it is not extraneous. All right. Okay, last problem. Go ahead and pick one of these. So the other class did uh, 69. This one, you might pick some different ones. 68. Okay. So I have log base 4 of square root x plus 3 minus log base 4 of square root 2x minus 1 equals 1 fourth. Okay, so definitely I'm going to have to condense those logs together. There is subtraction between them. So when you condense the logs, subtraction becomes 1. Division. And when you divide the square root by the square root, you could just make it one big square root if you want. So an x plus 3 on top, 2x minus 1 plus. Okay, so I have one log, and it is alone. What is my next step? All right, with exponents. 4 to the 1 fourth power equals square root of x plus 3 over 2x minus 1. What's your next step? You get rid of the square root, so we're going to square both sides. Um, so this is where you could use the calculator. You can do 1 fourth times 2 first if you want. It's going to be a half. What's 4 to the 1 half power? It's just going to be 2. Um, 1 half power is the same as taking a square root. But again, you can type that whole thing in the calculator. Just make sure you do the 1 fourth times 2 up there. And then on the other side, the square root and the square root are going to cancel. 
what are we going to do next? Get that denominator out of there. So 2 times 2x minus 1. On the other side, my denominator will be gone. And now I just have a linear equation, so we solve for x. 4x minus 2 equals x plus 3. If I subtract x on the left, I'm going to have 3x. If I add 2 on the right, I'm going to have 5. So 5 thirds is my final answer. This is definitely a good one to check for extraneous solutions. I put 5 thirds in here. 5 thirds plus 3, that's positive. We're going to be okay. 2 times 5 thirds is 10 thirds minus 1. That's still going to be positive. We're okay. So no extraneous solutions. That is it. That's what your test is going to look like tomorrow. Okay, so tonight, again, I'm going to post all of these problems in this video, as well as the second half of the test review, video and solutions, and then Friday in class, you guys are just going to do some stations and do some extra practice problems. So both videos will be on there if you want to hear me explaining every single problem that will be available. Okay, questions? Did this help a little bit? Maybe. Okay, and then make sure you take a look at those take-home quiz solutions. I posted those online last night. If there were ones that were giving you trouble, take the time, take a couple extra minutes, look at those answers online, and make sure you understand them. All right, cell phone model. Winner is 10. My winner. Okay. I'm going to go over here. Four, four, five, 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 Just in a log or Either one, actually. Yeah. As long as I get it back, I can trust you, right, Daniel? It's not going to like disappear, and I'm never going to see it again. So yes, that's fine. Okay. You're going to have another test on Monday, correct? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not necessarily.